What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training. HQ. And what I want to do right now is continue my beginner basic series. This one's going to be on what I, is in my opinion the most important topic and that's programming. Now what I'm going to do for this video is first I'm going to give you my opinion on what I recommend for someone who's just never lifted weights in their entire life. Where to begin. And then what I'm going to do at the end of the video is give some outside sources because remember that's really the point of this beginner basic series is to not just give my opinion but also a full universal guide that gives information outside of just what I believe or just information that I can provide. So with that being said, if someone just came to me and they haven't lifted a weight in their entire life, what I would first have them do is have a three to five week period an acclimation period where all they're doing is just going through the motions and the goal with that is to build up the mobility and motor control necessary to just execute the lifts with proper form and this is something that I think is overlooked quite often because a lot of times you know people just throw them into linear programs where they're focused on building strength as quickly as possible but a lot of people simply cannot perform a full back squat so during this period what I recommend is having no plan progression whatsoever Rather, I recommend just focusing on getting in the gym five days a week, full body workouts, high volume, but literally only using the bar if necessary. Because as I said, we're just trying to build the ability to even hit the positions, not necessarily get stronger in those positions just yet. So that's for later on. And that's why this period, you know, I say it's three to five weeks, but you know, some people may be able to skip this period entirely if they're, you know, formerly an athlete and now they're just getting into lifting weights. But if you're dealing with someone who has poor mobility, who maybe is used to working a desk job, you know, maybe he's a 40 year old trainee, you can't go in and expect them to be able to add 10 pounds to each you know, workout to their squat when they can't even squat properly in the first place. Now after that acclimation period, that is when I'd recommend that you get on a standard linear program. And what I mean by linear program is I mean that you're adding weight each week and just adding straight weight. You're not adding a percentage Rather, you're adding you know, either 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, and it's a basic progression. You just keep adding weight each week or each workout in some cases, and you're not you know, periodizing your training in terms of you know, focusing on volume one week, focusing on higher intensity, lower reps the other week. The rep ranges are the same from week to week. Now, for this phase, you have a spectrum that you want to keep in mind that a lot of people overlook. And it is where on one end of the spectrum, you have form integrity and reinforcing proper form. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have adding weight to the bar, intensity, progressive overload. And the reason why I put these on the opposite ends of the spectrum is because that is a conflict that exists among people who don't have their technique reinforced over years and years of training. See, I can push my squat and deadlift literally till failure and you won't see a lot of form breakdown because I've reinforced those positions over and over again. So I'm not strong deadlifting with a you know, rounded lower back. That's really not a strong position for me because I'm not used to being in that. And I've reinforced keeping a neutral spine over and over years and years. However, a beginner does not have that advantage. So if they keep pushing the weight and they keep just trying to progress as quickly as possible, there will be a risk of form breakdown essentially and that form breakdown will increase the likelihood of injury and it will set you up to not be as successful in the long run. So maybe you could get up to a 500 pound deadlift, but then afterwards, you know, where do you go from there if your form's just breaking down terribly? So basically what you wanna balance is being able to progress quickly in the short term, but also set yourself up for success in the long run. Because you can progress obviously quickly when you are a beginner. You're not used to lifting weights, you're not used to doing these movements, so you essentially get stronger very, very quickly and you put on muscle mass quickly as well. So that's why you don't wanna go necessarily off of a percentage-based program like my six-week program. Rather, you would, I would recommend my strength linear control program. I think a lot of people, they run a, you know, a five by five or a three by five program as long as they you know, physically can and then they hit a plateau as an intermediate lifter and they maybe don't realize that that could contribute to that plateau that they just slammed into. So I'm not saying, you know, obviously you want to take advantage of that fast progress, but there is a point where it could be, you know, detrimental possibly to your long-term progress. So this all comes back to why my linear control program is set up the way it is. It's an upper lower split, which most people don't recommend for beginners. Most people recommend full body workouts, but I like having the frequency at two times a week for beginners. So then they can kind of figure out what's right for them. 
you know, if you do it two times a week, then maybe you figure out, you know, you're better off with three times a week and then bump it up and switch to a full body routine. However, some people, you know, three times a week might be too much initially because, you know, while it's true that you are handling lighter loads as a beginner, your work capacity is also lower as well. You're not as conditioned to handle that workload. It is true that my program has a little bit more variation than some other beginner programs, but the theme here is still the same. When it comes down to it, you're squatting, benching, and deadlifting. In the pause variations, you're hitting the exact same positions. You're just you know, obviously slightly altering it by having that pause in the bottom position. That's all it is. It's not like your pause deadlift and pause squat aren't going to translate directly over to your squat and deadlift because it obviously will. It's just a little bit of variation, as I said, so you can take a step back and focus on your form and make sure your positioning is correct. So overall, my main point is to understand that technique and programming are completely interconnected, especially as a beginner. So I see a lot of people where they say they have certain form issues, but they don't think about the fact that maybe their programming is just a little too aggressive considering their ability to understand where their body is and to control their body and to be just skilled with the movements. So now that we got my recommendation for general strength out of the way, some other beginner programs that are proven and that just are great programs I'll include in the description. And that is Mark Ripito's Starting Strength, which is probably one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known strength program in the entire world. And then also a program that I personally like is that Jason Blaha's 5x5, and that's made more specifically for building muscle if you were interested in bodybuilding. So those two programs I really like, and then also, of course, I'll have a link to mine, and then I do have a strength hypertrophy version of my linear program when it comes to if you're focused on more bodybuilding style goals. Now, I want to say a big mistake I see a lot of people on the internet make is that it, I think it's in reaction to the mainstream lifter where they do too many you know, bicep curls and they don't actually squat to depth ever is I see people on the internet, they go the other way where they say to run starting strength no matter what. You know, if you're trying to have bodybuilding type of goals, you know, trying to build as much muscle as possible, try to have bigger arms. If you do that, if you run starting strength expecting to look like a bodybuilder, you will be very disappointed. It's a terrible bodybuilding program if you ask me. Now, obviously, it's a great program for general strength. But if you're trying to look, you know, aesthetic, as they say, if you're trying to just look as big as possible and you're never doing bicep curls and you're natural, you, your arms are just going to look terrible. That's just the truth of it. You know, you, unless if you're extremely genetically gifted, you know, you'd have to be so genetically blessed to have decent looking arms without steroids and with never doing bicep curls. So that's one of the reasons why I think this you know, heightened degree of minimalism can be very negative in terms of trying to build the body that you want if that's your goal. Now, as I said, you know, if your goal is strength, then that's of course a great way to go about it, to keep it as simple as possible. But you still can keep it simple and throw in a little bit of isolation work as well. That's why my programs always have that optional exercise slot so you can add in whatever you specifically want. You know, if you want to focus on developing a certain body part, then you can. Now, you've probably already noticed that the first links in the description are not to any of the programs I've mentioned, not even my own. And the reason is because it's to Powerlifting to Win, the YouTube channel, and his website, and it's run by a guy named Izzy, and he is an incredibly great source to learn more information about programming. And the thing that he's done is he's actually reviewed all of the programs that I've mentioned, including my own. And he has his own beginner program too as well. You know, so I definitely recommend that you check that out and see if that's right for you. And the reason why I want to mention him too is because in my opinion, he has, outside of myself, because you know, I won't ever include myself when I make these judgments, outside of myself, I think he has the best YouTube fitness channel there is on all of YouTube and he I think only has under 10,000 subs maybe right at 10,000 so I cannot recommend enough that you subscribe to his channel I would love it if you know if everybody watching this subscribed to his channel and checked out his content it really is that good and you know I rarely ever give a recommendation this strong I actually never have given a recommendation that's this strong in my entire life because I really think he is the best channel on YouTube outside of myself, bar none. So that's it. I gave you my opinion of how to handle a complete beginner and also gave you some outside sources of information in which all of them are fantastic. If you choose any of these programs, you will be completely set and you'll be set off way better than the average person. I'd say you'd be in the top 1% as far as people who actually go to the gym and work hard and focus on improving themselves rather than just going just to go. 
So that's it guys, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and subscribe to Izzy of Powerlifting to Win's channel if you haven't already as well. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, and thanks for watching guys. Peace.